Cleveland was the first postseason obstacle, a formidable one. But the Bulls pulled off a game one ambush that sent the series flying toward a fantastic finish in the deciding fifth game. Craig Elo in the waning seconds put the Cavaliers ahead 100 to 99. Three seconds left. As it turned out, a fitting stage for Michael Jordan. Zellers has Jordan. Jordan with two seconds to go. Puts it up. It's good at the buzzer. Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. Won a ticket to New York where they began a best of seven set with the Knicks and began it as they had the Cleveland series with a surprise victory. That win jet propelled a worn out Bulls team to a six game series triumph and a date with Detroit. Michael Jordan a steal. Jordan on the drive in on Oakley for the dunk. The Pistons well rested and confident figured to blow past the Bulls no sweat. But Chicago did the same thing to them they'd done to Cleveland and the Knicks in those series openers. The Bulls would be the only team able to beat Detroit in the postseason. They did it twice. But after a blistering start in the sixth game on June 2nd, fatigue finally caught up with Chicago. Michael Jordan, whose virtuoso performance throughout the playoffs was electrifying to watch, flat ran out of gas, and the Bulls ran out of time. We asked a lot of guys to mature and become better players, and they did that. It may have took them a whole season, but, you know, that... That's part of learning. You know, you have to have time to learn. And once the playoff hit, we became healthy again. We, we, uh, we gained that focus once again, and we started to roll and go further than anybody expects us to. Uh, I think we really matured as a team. And, uh, you know, we know that over the summer we've got to make some changes to make us a better team, to take us that extra step. Well, there weren't many changes, but there was one that shook the franchise. Doug Collins firing, a move that some people are still trying to figure out. But the major beneficiary of that decision was a man who for a long time has wanted to be a head coach in the NBA. Tonight, he'll be exactly that, Phil Jackson. When the Bulls made their surprising decision to fire Doug Collins, Phil Jackson was an obvious choice to replace him. Jackson brought with him to the job every credential but NBA head coaching experience. A 13-year NBA player, five years a CBA head coach, and then two years as a Bulls assistant. What he'll bring specifically to the Bulls this season is a simplified offense designed to take some heat off Michael Jordan and to keep everybody happy. With a 30-point score, you don't have as many shots for everybody else. We don't think that Michael Jordan should give up a lot of shots. He's not taking that many shots in the ball. He's getting a lot of free throws. A lot of his points are free throws. He's not overshooting the ball. It's just that we don't have that many shots to distribute around. So that's one of the reasons why we're trying to get more shots. Get more shots, get the ball up the floor faster, take a little uh, uh, less time getting a shot up, get the best shot you can get before the defense arrives. In the fourth quarter, if we need a Michael Jordan to help carry us over the hoop, maybe we can do it then. But Phil Jackson's emotions may be harder to hold in check later tonight when the lights go down and he's introduced to the sellout crowd as the head coach of the Chicago Bulls. When that happens, and it's an exciting moment, I mean, that beat goes into that Alan Parsons project tune that uh, they play to start out, and then Michael Jordan comes out and the roar's out there. You're already, uh, you know, vibrating. And I know I'll be elevated and uh, probably uh, levitating at that moment. Uh, but uh, I've got my feet on the ground, I think, and this team is very relaxed, I think, around me, and uh, they're very supportive. And I, I, that's a good thing for me because I don't have all the answers, and uh, I'm not an individual that uh, you know proclaims that uh, you know I know everything about this sport. Uh, I need help, and I told these guys right away that a lot of them are veterans now. Even the guys have been in the league a couple years, two, three years. They can give information to me that will help us uh, win games. So we're going to try and uh, put this together as a 12-man project. Maybe we can come out ahead. Number 23, Michael Jordan. The stadium trembles each time his name is called, as much with anticipation as with noise. While none of us need be reminded of the greatness of Michael Jordan, Michael reminds us anyway, night after night. He kept it in bounds. Here it is again. Oh! Yes! Oh! Jordan's early explosion against the Pistons in Game 6 last year proved once again that he's virtually indefensible. But his fatigue at the finish proved again that he can't do it all by himself. Phil Jackson plans to turn Michael loose again this year with less structure on offense in hopes that other players will become more involved. Jordan has no problem sharing the Bulls' spotlight. What happens to you when these guys 
raise their games to the level where, hey, I need the ball and I need to be scoring 20 or 25 points a game? Well, you know, I'm still going to be there. I'm going to be there to, to kind of take up the slack if need to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be uh, the type of person who's very hungry to, to lead the league in scoring once again or to, to chase individual accolades. I, I'm not that type of person. I'm, right now, I'm more or less geared towards team success. And, you know, I love to see Scotty make an all-star team or Hodge make an all-star team. You know, other players on the team to make an all-star team. To just to get that feeling and that, and that I guess, uh, accomplishment of achieving something that, you know, a lot of people may not ever thought they could achieve. Uh, you know, but when they start to achieve individual status, status then certainly I'm not going to be uh, jealous of these guys because I want them to do well. I imagine the freelance game is probably better for you anyway, though. I think the freelance is better for a lot of uh, our players on our team right now. Uh, you know, Scotty Pippen, a great open court player. You know, Horace is young and open court player. John Paxson is always a spot up jump shooter, uh, a good penetrator, and now then, and Craig. Who, you know, what can we say about Craig and his threes? The new guys, it's pretty easy for them and pretty simple for them to adapt to that style of game without the pressures of learning plays. And uh, you know, they've really done a great job preseason. And, and to see how well they adjust to the season is still going to be somewhat of a uh, experience for them and for us, but you know I think they're very capable of doing a good job. With the beginning of the season, one of Michael Jordan's biggest problems is getting in and out of NBA arenas in one piece. He's unquestionably the most sought-after autograph in sports, and that's not Michael's favorite part of basketball superstardom. Is it fun to be Michael Jordan, or sometimes would you rather be somebody else? Well, you got your pros and cons. I mean, uh, from a status point of view, or from the uh, admiration that you receive day out, you know, it's great. You know, it's, it's good to be looked upon and as, as guidance and as something that's positive. But the kind part of about it is, the uh, negative part about it is that you, know, you lose a lot of your, your natural uh, things that you may want to do. I mean, to go to a mall or go out to eat and not be recognized or go to the movie without being hassled. Uh, those things you have to give up. And, uh, you know, I must admit that the pros outweigh the cons by, by all means, and, uh, but it is some, uh, some cons that you have to put up with. This is a time where I get to spend a lot of time at home. You know, I've been traveling all summer and you know, things are starting to settle down now. I'm getting into a daily routine of uh, going to practice, going to the games, traveling. And that's daily, that's a, that's a routine that I went through for, what, five years now. So uh, this is relaxation time, if I want to say right now, for myself. Jim Durham, play-by-play -play man for the Bulls. Johnny Kerr, the analyst. In Chicago, you know these guys by sight and by sound. Across the country, you may not know them, but you sure will before the season's over with them. Guys, first of all, welcome to WGN. Welcome back for you, Red. But, Jim, it's great to have you. I tell you what, Dan, you know, I think uh, all of America is gonna, going to be in for a great treat. Uh, they're going to see an NBA game in Chicago Stadium from our point of view, from a Chicagoan's point of view. And uh, this building sold out the way it is tonight for this game. This presentation that they have here is probably as fine a, as fine a presentation as you'll find anywhere in the NBA. And we can expect it every night they play. Every night, 41 times here. It's unbelievable. And... John, you've gotten some mail you were talking about before we went on tonight from people across the country that uh, are champing at the bit to see these games on WGN. Well, not only will they get a chance to see the great presentation that Jim and I see uh, all the time here, Dan, but they'll get a chance to see the super, one of the top superstars in the league, and that's Michael Jordan. I get the greatest job in the world. I get to watch <laughs> him 82 times a year free. You guys are going to really enjoy what you see this year, believe me.